Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Dial-In. If you saw the last episode, you might remember that I had a little bit of a problem with my grinder. I'm pretty sure that the issue was that the burrs were very old or relatively old. They were about seven years old, maybe even eight years old. I bought this grinder secondhand and replaced the burrs as soon as I bought it. And that was around 2012, 2013, can't ex exactly remember when. And I'm gonna make another video kind of explaining how I decided it was time to change the burrs aside from the age. But today we're just gonna dive straight back in. Technically you're supposed to season the burrs a little bit before you really get into using them and dialing in with them. Um, I haven't really had enough coffee around to be able to do that properly, so it might be a little bit hectic today, but hopefully, assuming that the burrs were the only problem with this grinder, then we should be in good shape. And I got a coffee that is somewhat familiar to me. So this coffee is called... Oh, it's called... There's no light on the coffee, but... So this coffee is called The Truth. It is a blend from Cat and Cloud. Similar to the answer, which in our shop we use for pretty much everything, espresso, drip, it works very well. And this is sort of a lighter, sort of like a single origin blend. So a bit brighter, a bit fruitier, a bit more of like a single origin feel to it. I'm gonna start off with the regular recipe. So 17 in, 35 out, shooting for about 25 to 30 seconds. I'm gonna pause and do a little calibration exercise on this and I'll be right back. Calibration tool. Anyways, calibration is sort of a topic for another time. Let's get back into it. Sort of a weird way to judge baskets, but if I have a tamper like this and the top of this little piston sits flush when I tamp, then I have a good idea that this is the proper dose for this particular basket. Uh, not exactly the most scientific way to determine that, but it's kind of a neat way to test it out. All right, so we hit 35 out with 17 grams in, in about 23 seconds. So we're running a little bit fast, but definitely much, much closer. The calibration is definitely successful and we have a lot of room on the grinder to go finer. Um, also, it seems like the grinder is not struggling as much with grinding as fine as it needs to grind to do espresso. So that is making me happy. <laughs> Very green. This really smells like it does need to be a little bit more developed. Sometimes with coffees that are under extracted or under roasted, or in just some ways not having like their full flavor profile presented, you'll get this kind of like legumey, kind of beany flavor coming out. This is a little bit grassy too.
flavor wise right out the gate it's a little harsh uh overall and like a bit sour i do remember last time dialing in a single orchard from cat and cloud we ended up going 17 in and up to 40 out and expanding it a little bit uh, i'm not quite ready to do that yet with this coffee I want to take it a little bit finer <clears throat> and get a little bit more sweetness coming out. There's just not a lot going on right now. A little bit of acidity poking out there, a little bit of sweetness coming through at the very end. Mm. There's like the hint of like some really nice like kind of turbinado sugar, maybe even like a panela sugar hiding in there somewhere. So let's keep going and see where we can get this to you. Okay, this shot was 28 seconds out. Um, you'll probably notice it channeled like crazy, but I'm gonna taste it anyway. It'll definitely be a little uneven, but it'll give at least an idea of what's going on. I, I wanna pull a shot again, kind of regardless, maybe purge a little bit through. I'm kind of thinking I don't purge enough through this grinder. Could be wrong, but Definitely worth a try. More of that turbinado sugar coming through at the very beginning, uh, what I was tasting at the very end, kind of getting it on the nose. Maybe there's like a little like overripe pear and like a little allspice. Wow, super tart. So this shot is really alive now, which is nice. The last shot was pretty subdued and nothing going on really at all. There's a real pleasant tartness there, but the shot does taste really uneven. There's still like this really kind of biting thing at the very back of the throat. That harshness, that like really harsh bitterness that was present kind of throughout the last shot is gone though, which is nice. Yeah, still quite sour. I'm gonna do one more shot without really changing anything. I'll purge a little bit more through the grinder to make sure I got all the old grounds out and we'll see. Could have been a tamping issue too. Um, yeah, let's do another one. <clears throat> Had to get my brush buddy back. For some reason, there's like a lot of grounds getting stuck right at the front of the group. Um, I think it might be an ergonomic issue. This thing sits way lower than like a Lama or Zoko might sit. But anyway, that's my problem. Not really a problem with the coffee or anything like that. That's better already. All right, so that took about 26 seconds. So we did get a little bit finer and the shot looked way more even. Smelling a lot better right off the bat too. Flavors are much more well-rounded. Starting to get into like sort of a red cherry, leaving that sort of like malic acid thing behind. Um, I didn't really taste that on the last shot. It was mostly like a baked pear thing on the nose. I was having trouble picking up the nose on this one. It's not quite super pronounced, but I'm starting to get a really nice uh, 
tart cherry, maybe like a sweet, like dried cranberry kind of thing going on, which I like. Yeah, still a little sourness to it right on the back, but I'm doing this a lot because it's very tart. I'm at the point now where I'm kind of resisting drinking it because it is starting to taste quite good. But there's still something about it. Is it cool? I like tasting out of those ceramic cups because they suck a lot of the heat out of it. The glass doesn't really do that as much. You could say that's an argument against ceramic, certainly. Uh, for these purposes, though, kind of like it. Yeah, very tart and acidic. Ooh, I'm starting to get a little puckery now. I'm gonna go a bit finer, try and balance out that acidity with a little bit more sweetness and like a little bit more body. It's a very light espresso so far, and I really am liking the texture and the consistency of it. I might have to actually boost it up to 40 grams out to maintain that, but we will find out on the next shot. All right, this one's looking really nice, or it, it looked really nice. 27 seconds, still 17 in, 35 out. So kind of in the ballpark for what we were aiming for. Yeah, still not, still not a lot going on on the nose on this coffee. Maybe if you were like smelling a bag full of like, uh, like milk chocolate morsels and turbinado sugar. Okay, a little bit more fruit coming out now. But it's still pretty tight in the nose. Mmm, okay. Yeah, sorry, I just, well, I don't know why I'm apologizing to you. I should be apologizing to myself because it's almost six o'clock and I just chug that uh that little sip right down uh this is this is really tasty now still like a tiny bit of bite on the finish but it's still hot but that sweetness has really come up to meet the acidity and yeah a lot of ripe red cherry notes been kind of a long day so I'm having trouble really pinning down exactly what this is mm, very bright and juicy I really want to make like an iced Americano with sparkling water with this thing mmm be so good with just like a tiny bit of sugar just a tiny bit mm, I'm into it so this was 17 in 35 out about 27 seconds I'm curious if going to 40 out would help get that bite out in the back because the sweetness is there, the acidity is there, the body is there, and maybe that is just the part that could be lessened a little bit to get that kind of like punchy, punchy uh, thing in the back of your throat <laughs> to go away. Um, I'm not saying I don't like that but it's not exactly for everybody. I like really I like really acidic, really punchy single origin espressos. To be honest with you, I'd kind of rather have a single origin espresso than a single origin coffee, especially one that has like a lot of Kenyan in it uh, or something with like an Ethiopian component in general. Um, I might say something totally different in three months, but it's nice to have that in like a tiny little package, drink it up real fast, enjoy it, and then move on instead of having you know, a big 12 ounce cup of something with like a lot of acidity, a lot of complexity. It's kind of a lot to take on, um, at least for me. So let's try 17 and 40 out 
and this should hit in about 28 to 29 seconds and we'll see how that goes. Well, that was interesting. The pre-infusion took a lot longer to get fully saturated that time. I might throw the shot out and try another one. Cause I'm getting back to that kind of green. Kind of grassy smell again, but let's see. A lot of sweetness there actually, but yeah, un underdeveloped for sure. I'm not sure what happened, but let's try it again. Okay, 28 seconds, much more like the shot previous to it as far as the flow and all that stuff goes. It's really, really worth the cash to get a bottomless portafilter. Without it, you, you can still kind of tell when things look awry, but it's really nice to just be able to see it right there. And I can tell pretty much right away if something is at least different, uh, not necessarily right or wrong, but different from the shot before. So again, not much on the nose. It seems to get more pronounced as it cools, which is a little strange. I would have thought that aromas dissipate as you go. But this is really balanced. I kind of like the punchiness of the one before. I'm gonna give this another second to kind of cool. I need a swirl cam for right there and just watch it swirl. I need like one more camera up here. Yeah, this is good. This side would be much more comfortable serving this to somebody else. However, I really like the punchy 17 and 35 out that I had before going for myself. Even with that little tiny bite at the end, um, it's not really something that bothers me too much. I also find not necessarily here as much, but in a cafe setting, like if I'm working behind the bar, I'll never be totally happy with a shot that I am preparing. I'll dial it in, try and get it as close as I can, and still kind of find like little things that kind of bother me about it. And then I'll go in the next day, say I have the day off the next day, and I wanna go in and have a coffee on my day off. I'll have an espresso and drink it happily and really enjoy it, because I'm not thinking about it. I'm not really looking for all the little things that I could fix or tweak. I'm just trying to enjoy it, so. Funny, as I keep on talking and talking, this is getting much better, and I enjoyed that last sip a lot more. Oh, man, now it's a toss-up, actually, between these two. I think you could go either way. And I might even kind of be changing my mind as this cools down. I was starting to get more towards that idea in my head of like that sparkling water Americano over ice. Mm, which should be so good, even on a day like today. It's October 3rd, 4th. Anyways, it's starting to be fall here 
in Maryland and it's starting to get a little chilly. It's like 40 degrees in the morning and then it's like 65, 70 degrees in the afternoon. But still like that, those ice drinks with like some really nice sparkling water still like kind of cut through the like kind of like change of season ick that I get. Um, you know, I get kind of like kind of sore throat, a little bit, you know, runny nose, that sort of thing, you know, not really super pleasant. You just kind of get kind of a head cold. Throw some sparkling water in there, it just kind of clears it up for a second. Hmm. It's very pleasant. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Weekly Dial-In. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I have a link down below to a Patreon page that I have just started. If you feel so inclined to support me in that way, I would so much appreciate it. And if you do, I want to give back. Every month I'm gonna do a little Q&A video just for patrons over there on Patreon. So check the link down below for that. And until next time, I'll see you very soon. All right, y'all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.